All right, welcome YouTube. So I've got my boat backed into my garage and that means it's time finally to do the rebuild on this uh, Sea-Doo Challenger 1800. This is a 1997 boat. It has the dual 787 engines in it. And so the rebuild is, I've got an engine over here that loves to collect oil when you shut the engine off and it's a quick oil it doesn't take time that much time overnight this engine will literally fill it with oil anyway i've got a new crank for it and but first we got to get this engine out of here so this is probably going to be a two-part video first part is just getting this engine out of here and uh and then we'll get it on my little bench here and uh rebuild this thing but um this is going to be my first engine pull on a boat. I've done multiple ones on Yamaha, jet skis, sea -Doo's. Never a boat. So uh, it's going to be different, but uh, a lot of things, more things should be the same and familiar to me. So my channel is not one that people come for entertainment. You probably search YouTube just like I do, looking for answers to problems and situations you're in. So if you're here, because of that, I hope this helps. Like I said, we're going to try to go through this step by step pulling this engine. I'll be learning right along with you uh, with this boat. And then we're going to get it on the bench and rebuild it. So if that interests you, hang around. So we are going to get into this uh, right now. All right. So we are looking into the, down at the engine from the back seat of the boat. And since this is my first engine pull, I really don't have a plan already ready in place, um, but just looking at it, I don't know how much I'm going to be able to film. Um, you know, it depends on where I can set you and get you situated. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of like lay it out what I think I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, I know I'm hoping that I'll be able to get all the engine out, including the exhaust uh, just undo it right down there as you can see right in front of the water box hopefully I can just disconnect that and be able to pull everything out except for the carb here's what I'm thinking I have no idea if, if this will work I rebuilt the carbs maybe eight months ago so I don't think there's anything that needs to be done to them so um, I'm going to remove the carbs but I'm going to leave everything connected to them i don't know if i can do that that's just a thought maybe if i could lay it over to the side and give me some clearance and not remove all the fuel lines the throttle cable choke cable uh the oil cable so we'll see we'll see how that goes so here's what i know i've got to do uh, i'm going to start by getting down here to the pump and getting that uh sir clip out and then I'm going to go to the back of the ski and get the pump out. Then I've got to remove my water lines and, of course, the oil lines going to the engine itself that are down under here. And remove everything else. And for the most part, I'm hoping that, minus the carburetor, I can pull everything out just as it is. And, um, you know, I might have to remove the uh, back lid here because it kind of drapes over you can't see it Let me go up here so it does kind of drape over at an angle over the top of this engine so anyway i think that's going to be the plan we're going to see how it works and getting this engine out the whole reason i am backed into this garage is i'm going to be using my hoist so we're going to run it right up here uh, just above the engine bay and hopefully get this thing strapped up and just hoist it right on out of here without breaking my back so that's what i'm going to start out doing and i'll try to get you in here uh, to see as much of the detail as possible so with that let me uh, get what i need here and let me get started All right. as i mentioned the first thing i believe i'm going to do is get this carb off of the engine
see, I'm gonna have to get the pump hose off here. And let's see if I can do this, pull this off by hand. I didn't grab my hose clamps, so. Got it. I don't wanna lose my clamp, although it doesn't matter. It's just gonna fall down to the bottom. All right, so I don't wanna rip it off, but I guess I'll have to use new gaskets anyway. This one came off, didn't it? Yeah. So am I missing something? Probably. What am I missing? Or is it just that tight? <laughs> it's just tight. Oh, okay, I put some gaskets. Uh, See you right. No wonder. All right. It's harder than you think, guys, to lean over back in here. Um, you know, probably should. I think the way to do this is to take the lid off up here at the top and just lean over the back of the engine instead of from the back seat. So I'm probably doing it backwards. Um, but I started it, so let's just see. So right below here, you know, I wonder if that can stay there. So let me show you what has got to be removed. Pick you up easily here. So, so if you see right down there, I get my finger pointed. I've got the oil line coming in for the rotary gear, and then right below it is the starter. So I'm going to have the uh, ground to the starter and the power to the starter to undo and again like I said that oil and uh, I know I've got on the back side here I'm going to have a water line and another oil line on the back side of this engine but that's going to be the last thing I take off uh, I'm going to concentrate everything over here get everything disconnected and I still have to remove the plate or the what do you call it, the, the gear shaft cover uh there the plastic cover and then get in there underneath that and remove the circlip so that i can pull the shaft out i'm going to uh, undo the water pipe connection back there to hopefully as i mentioned before pull everything out in unison so I've got another oil line that I've got to pull right down here that's connected to the oil pump. So I have three oil lines to connect, two lines to the starter to, and water lines, drive shaft, sensor cable or uh, heat sensor right there. And that'll be it. So let me, I'll try to, you know, set you down in here in case you want to see everything and let's uh, continue on. Okay, so let me get my hose clamp here and show you what I've done. So I've disconnected the uh, power to the starter here. I've already uh, loosened or it slid down. So loosen the oil line. So let me see if I can get this off here. And this is going to, I'll show you what this is going to give me room. That was really easy. And unfortunately, I still have oil. I drained all the oil out of this thing, including the oil reservoir. But I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to be taking the engine. I'll clean it out. But there it goes. It's starting to dump the oil in the bottom of the hole. So I've got a bolt our nut right down here that's going to uh, loosen or free up my fuel line and that way I can get the carbs the rest of the way out of the way. It's a 13 mil I believe. 
dark. So let me see if I can get down here and probably block you off. But All right. Okay, so I stopped and did what I mentioned just a little earlier. I took the deck lid off. Much better and easier access to just kind of go from the back of the boat and in instead of up there leaning down head first from the back seats. So let's get in this. I did a couple of things. I'm going to show you what I did. Nothing major. Uh, okay, so let me show you now what I did just um, after taking the deck lid off. This is the bracket I was trying to get off, which holds the uh, fuel line in. So it, anyway, it did allow me to remove the whole carburetor and lay it over the other engine to clear up a lot of space. And so what I did is maybe you can see the hose clamps. I took the uh, oil pump hose off the back. That's probably something I could have waited until I got the engine ready to pull out and then as I started lifting the engine take that off instead of pulling it off there was very little room to get back there the other thing that is different is you see the yellow tape that is an extra ground going to the stator cover so I've wrapped it up in tape so that that bolt I'm leaving it in there so that I don't forget about it and so that'll be there when I get this engine back in and uh, then I think I also removed the ground from the starter down here. And so that kind of catches you up to date. What I've done, but there is one other thing that is different than any other ski that I've worked on so far. And I'm trying to get myself situated okay so i also peeled back using this block of wood that's down here and a pry bar so i peeled back this to get to the circlip and but it's not a circlip that is an actual o-ring uh going all the way around so i haven't run into that before i don't know if someone put that on there because they misplaced the circlip or that's the way it came. I have no idea. That's interesting. So I'm going to, um, next thing I'm going to do is this boot. I got to get these Oedeker clamps off. All right. So I've got, got it broken apart. Let's pry it off. not too much damage to it I really need for the part that's kind of down here at the bottom I really need it to kind of be up on the top that would sure make it easier to get this one there we go all right so for now I'm just going to leave them hanging I'm not gonna waste time trying to unlock them. So now, let me see. Um, let me grab you real quick. Pick you up here, let me get my mic out of the way. So, Just have these water lines to remove. I'd already broken loose the um, clamps, as you can see. Now the sensor is off. I have the electrical still plugged up in the back uh, to the stator. And uh, we're going to see, like I said, there's no plan. I'm hoping that once I 
get the pump out and I'm not going to um, unbolt the engine until I get the pump out use that as leverage to get it out and uh, I think that's about it so let's move to the back of this boat and um, I guess while I'm here it is certainly easier to access but it's still difficult and there we go I don't even know if you if you could pick that up I'm holding the camera and I'm doing it as uh, one-handed so all right so let's move to the uh, back right. so we're down here now at the pump and I think I have enough lighting down here that we don't need a flashlight so I've already taken off the steering nozzle bar so it kind of hooks in there as you can see taking that off and then now I've got the bar this bar to take off which is the reverse and so the steering and the reverse everything is connected this pump and these two bars this you know what would you call it, like the dummy um, so once I get these two bars off then this will free this up completely and to do this I've already done one it is a small it's a seven mil boat there's three of them right underneath the uh, bucket here to take out and that'll loosen it from there and then we're going to get this um, pump and hopefully it'll come right on out okay none of this worked as planned here and again this is all learning experience but i got the nozzle off but i had to remove the other end uh, down here and you know i've got a section of this reverse bucket knocked out i wonder um, if somebody hadn't done this before and took out this side of this uh, bucket you can see where i had to unbolt it here to uh get it off and get it out of the way so let's get that out down here so now let's see what trouble we can run into in just getting the tire pump out can't tell if that's going to end up being in our way looks like it doesn't it so we'll see uh, let me I've got a washer and a lock washer, I'm sure. Let's up here now. All right. Let's see if this is going to play easy for us or hard. Let's see. So there, now that's pretty clean. Wouldn't you say that looks like a pretty new prop or impeller? And the Clearance looks like a new wear ring, right? So let's take a look at what this is that I'm seeing. Let me see if you are seeing that. Let me find a flashlight. So I see something different here. So what is that? So it looks like I'm going to be stopping here and I'm going to have to go look this up and see 
what we been dealing with here and what that is going through the hole there so it's not going to help me get the engine out with the shaft still in it so all right man i don't know what to do stop here all right so let me bring you back in real quick with an update um i didn't go in and find out yet uh what that is but what i did with then i just grabbed the the um shaft and here it is it just came right on out so, so anyway i guess that's uh well i'm not even gonna speculate but anyway we got the the shaft out like i said it just came right on out no issues and so that got me to the point oops where we are now so with that done and the shaft out freeing the engine up i hooked a straps to the engine and pretty much did what i had planned to do i raised it not that high but i did raise it up and I was able to get under the, where's there, my finger. I was able to get under the left side of the engine and uh, disconnect the water line from. The oil line from that side, I just disconnected it from the tank itself uh, instead of from the engine. So really I only had the water line, got that done. Raised it a little bit now and I'm about to jump up here and get it out of the engine bay and then slide this boat out and get this over onto the bench so with that let me uh, get you on the tripod and we're gonna get this engine out of here so let's just take a quick look at it before i lower this thing down i obviously i've got to take this thing out and driveway and give it a good bath but um that pretty much matches the inside of the hole we'll take a look at that in a minute and now the flashlight's not working uh, but i think we pick it up pretty good um can you see that i can't read it what kind of starter 
that is on there so this would be kind of interesting for me when i get this on the bench i'll pretty much know once i get in there if um this engine's been taken apart before there was the ground that's not a missing bolt it's still in the ski there but uh, we had an extra ground bolted in right there in addition to the ground here on the bottom of the starter so all right not much to see except one filthy engine and so let's i guess the next thing is get this thing give it a good bath get it on the bench and we'll start dissecting this thing There she is, cleaned up in all of her glory here before we start tearing down. Uh, a few observations real quick. Um, there's one thing that kind of bothers me. Let me see if I can spin this around. I may not have to spin it around all the way, but uh, that's good enough. One of the things is you can see the scoring and just the heat coming from these ray valves that's made its way down uh, to the exhaust there. So, you know, that's always concerning. And if you guys know what causes this, um, I had one guy, um, gosh, I forgot his uh, YouTube, but, um, he thought it maybe it was the um, water regulator on the water box that's probably not working right and it's not uh, allowing enough water into the engine to cool it and therefore it's getting hot. So let me know if you guys know. Uh, that sounds like a very real um, problem and you know could very well be the issue on this engine. The other thing real quick is just that uh, you can tell by the amount of paint knocked off these bolts that uh, I won't be the first one inside of this engine. So hopefully this engine had 150 PSI in both cylinders and we had it out on the water and it ran great. Uh, so the only problem we had was the oil uh, filling up the um, crankcase. So I'm hoping we get in here and there's no surprises on the inside. We can just swap out this crankshaft, get it all back together and back in the ski. Um, and the only other th observations, I guess, 
This is the first time, as I mentioned, pulling the engine out of a boat. I thought it would be a lot easier than a jet ski, and uh, in some ways it, it was. I, I did have more room. I liked that I could pull out virtually the whole engine, as opposed to um, you know having to remove the exhaust pipes, the uh, carburetors, just to get it out of the, the hole of a jet ski. So that was nice, but I think the sheer height of this boat made it um, well difficult um, and I don't there was no way without this hoist up here where is it there we are no way without that I don't think that I could have gotten that engine from down inside of this um, engine bay out so that's just a, a you know a large or a long lift up and over to get it over the back of this so so with that being said, guys, I appreciate you joining me. I hope, you know, uh, this video was helpful in some way. And um, we will catch you on the next video. So thanks, guys.